In this video, I'm going to explain the relationship between zinc and viral infections. And it's a little bit different than what most people think. So in this paper, they talk about the role of zinc in antiviral immunity. Now notice the following quotation, which is very important to appreciate. Unfortunately, zinc concentrations used to assess antiviral activity often far exceed physiological concentrations. So if you uh, load up a culture model with a bunch of zinc, you can kill viruses, but that doesn't happen in real life. So you can't get concentrations that high. So here would be an example of a culture study. These are all the various culture studies, and here's zinc basically killing the virus, and that doesn't happen. And so here are other mechanisms that, of, that zinc may be involved in, but they, we, we cannot take enough zinc to knock out a virus directly. Now that doesn't mean that people should, of course, you can see the title here, not take zinc. You should take it based upon a uh, better understanding of how it works. So zinc supplementation, what does it do? It decreases infections in elderly. Now they go 55 to 87, so that's kind of young to be called elderly, but side note, how's it work though? By reducing cytokines and reducing oxidative stress, which means free radicals. So they took 50 healthy subjects. You can see the age range. Half got a zinc supplement, zinc gluconate, that contained 45 milligrams of zinc. And they took it daily for 12 months. So what did they find? Well, they found that there was a significant reduction in uh, viral infections. So this is what we were told in the conclusion. So after zinc supplementation, incidence of infections was significantly lower, zinc was higher, and look at what happened. The generation of this pro-inflammatory cytokine and free radical production, oxidative stress, were lower, lower in the group taking zinc. So here you can see from this study from back in 2007, so you had the zinc supplement group, remember it's 45 milligrams of zinc gluconate a day for... Uh, 12 months every day, and then placebo. They didn't know if they were getting zinc or not. And look at the outcome. In the placebo group, those that did not get the zinc, 88% had infections. These are mostly viral infections. And then in the zinc supplemented group, 29% had uh, infections, which means, of course, not everybody was protected, and no one should be surprised about that because how can zinc by itself just magically prevent and uh, viral infections across the entire population. That would be a, you know, a, foolish no, a, a foolish notion to embrace. So how does zinc work in the case of viral infections? Well, again, remember, zinc reduces the generation of, reduces the generation of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Here's tumor necrosis factor and free radicals. So let's look at an image. Now, this is an image from my new book, The Deflame Diet for Immune Health. Now, this is actually an easy image to understand. It just takes a little bit of time uh, going through it, which is what that chapter is for. And I've done videos, or I'll be doing more videos on this as well. So we're going to take out the section that has nothing to do with zinc. And there we go. So again, here is the paper. It was published in 2007. Zinc supplementation decreases incidence of infections in elderly, and the effect is related to cytokines and free radicals. So this O2 negative, this is called a superoxide free radical. It's generated by predominantly on a constant basis by organelle in all of our cells called mitochondria. The mitochondria make energy, and when they make energy, they also make free radicals, which is easily handled as long as we are nutritionally balanced in our diets and primarily loaded with vegetation and minimal amounts of sugar, flour, and of course refined oils. So you can see right here ZN and you can see here again ZN. So this is ZN stands for zinc. So zinc is part of an enzyme called superoxide dismutase which would knock out superoxide and that means there will be less free radicals produced. And those free radicals that are produced, like this is called a lipid radical, or fatty acid radical, this is called a lipid peroxyl radical. And so when we have these free radicals that escape, that are produced because we can't uh, knock out all the superoxide over here that I just knocked out that you can't see anymore, so the outcome will be some of these free radicals will activate this signaling molecule called nuclear factor kappa B, 
which is involved in stimulating the production of tumor necrosis factor, tumor necrosis factor. So zinc will inhibit the nuclear factor, and then that will reduce the pro-inflammatory effect of these free radicals, and less pro-inflammatory cytokines will be produced. So now how does this work in the context of viral infections? Well, we're always exposed to various immune challenging stimuli. When I mean immune challenging, what happens is, for example, take allergies, because that's the easiest one for people to relate to, because a lot of people have allergies. When you're exposed to pollen, the symptoms that manifest are due to immune system activation. And so that involves cytokines and free radicals. So when you're exposed to a, a, a virus, you should be able to be exposed to the virus and not have a substantial reaction like people are having to SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus that they call, the, the condition is COVID-19, for which many people get hospitalized. Actually, it's a, a, a small number compared to the total infection population, but they get hospitalized because they're too flamed up. So zinc can help with this because zinc will knock out free radicals and it will inhibit the nuclear factor and therefore reduce the production of these cytokines and therefore lessen the aggressiveness of the body's reaction to the virus. Now there's a whole lot more that we should be concerned about, but this is how zinc works. It does not kill viruses. It reduces the inflammatory reaction of the body when exposed to viruses so we can clear the virus with minor or no symptoms. For more info on uh, immune health, uh, this book is now available. This is at my Amazon author page, which you can go to directly if you want, or I'll put the link down below, or you can go right to dflame.com, click right here, and you can buy volumes, or you can also just click for the one, it'll take you right to Amazon.